Hey guys, remember four years ago when I started this series and I said I would go through every episode of the first season of New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh and then I stopped short and that was four years ago? Well, don't even worry about it. Let's just get right into the new episode. Episode 20A, Tigger's Shoes. Found this one pretty boring, to be honest. So Rabbit just wants Tigger to leave him alone as usual. So he brings him to this big cliff called Castle Ridge and says, bouncing to the top in one bounce will prove that Tigger is the world's best bouncer. He makes up a lie about a relative of his called the Awesome Bunny of Upsidasia, who he says could make it to the top in one bounce in his sleep. Rabbit says this is possible for the bunny thanks to some special bouncing shoes. Gopher goes along with this for some reason. Uh, he says it's a harmless prank, but I don't know what the prank is. A convincing Tigger that magic bouncing shoes exist. Okay. Uh, anyway, Tigger wants the shoes, so Rabbit fills them with metal to weigh Tigger down before giving them to him. And Gopher gets upset about this and tells Rabbit that this is going too far. Uh, I don't know why he didn't just expose Rabbit's lie right away if he thought so, but he doesn't. Uh, so Tigger puts on the shoes and tries to bounce the ridge, and of course he can't because they're really heavy now, but he's convinced he just needs to get used to them, so he keeps trying until Rabbit feels bad uh, for setting Tigger on this Sisyphean struggle. Uh, so Rabbit tries to fix things by stealing the shoes, but Tigger, due to the stress of his training, I guess, starts sleepwalking and sets off a comedy of errors in which Pooh and Piglet mistake him not for the awesome bunny of Upsidasia, but the awful bunny of Upsidownia, who they think has come to reclaim his stolen shoes. Uh, so long story short, Tigger sleep bounces to the top of the ridge and then Gopher reveals that Rabbit's story was a lie, but Tigger thinks Rabbit did it to help him by making him train with the big-weighted shoes like Master Roshi making Goku wear the turtle shell. He's actually just wrong, though, that the training helped. Like, there's no evidence in this episode that his bouncing was improved by his effort. He doesn't even bounce Castle Ridge in one bounce in the end. He just sleep bounces, and then we see him at the top at the end, and he assumes that he must have bounced it in one bounce. But he said at the beginning when Rabbit brought him there that he could bounce it in two bounces. Uh, and when he wakes up, he says he doesn't know how he got to the top. So why does he think he bounced it in one bounce? Because he, he doesn't remember. Uh, honestly, why did they write it this way? Like, it, it would be a much better ending if in the end he did bounce to the top in one bounce. Because he was stronger because the shoes. I mean, the setup for it was there. He's been training all episode. Why... It would make complete sense. It just doesn't happen. But why? <laughs> like, what a waste. Why didn't they? D uh, whatever. Uh, there's just no, there's no stakes to this one. It's just a, a series of trivial lies and misunderstandings. And it's kind of lame and bad. Episode 20B, Lights Out. This one is uh, just, it's just really bad. It's bad. Uh, uh, Rabbit's mad at Pooh uh, for borrowing his shovel because he needs it for gardening. Uh, but then, hypocrite that he is, Rabbit goes and borrows Gopher's flashlight helmet uh, so he can garden at night, and then he forgets to return it. So uh, the next morning, Gopher complains about his missing helmet, and Rabbit is too embarrassed and won't admit that he took it. So Pooh, fool that he is, assumes that since he's such an idiot, he must have lost it. Uh, so Rabbit tries to go get it and return it, but he can't remember where it is. So Pooh ends up going down into Gopher's tunnels to look for it, and he gets lost. Uh, so one after another, every other character follows him down to look for them, uh, and then they get lost, and then repeat with the next character uh, until they're all down there, except for Gopher, who's scared of the dark. He's d -d -d dark. Everyone's scared of the dark all of a sudden in this episode. I don't know why Gopher works in underground tunnels if he's scared of the dark whatever uh anyway in the end gopher gets over his crippling fear of the dark that he just developed for this episode and he goes down and he saves everyone uh and then in the end rabbit finds the helmet and gives it back to gopher but gopher says he doesn't need it anymore sunny i can't do the voice uh because he conquered his fear which i guess means he doesn't need any light source at all he doesn't need need to be able to see forget the helmet. i don't need a helmet anymore I'm not afraid of the dark. It's terrible. It's just, it's just terrible. Uh, all I could think about watching this episode was just how much use they probably get out of reusing background art. 
um, in this show and just in cartoons in general. Like, I wonder how many uh, backgrounds they just they made before they even started making the show. And then in making the show, you know, there's probably a lot of scenes where they don't even have to make a new background because they just have a bunch of stock backgrounds they used. And they probably did that for a lot of this episode. Like, how many scenes in previous episodes have played out just in front of this gopher's mailbox or just in generic caves? You can just you can just reuse these backgrounds for all those scenes. Uh, and in lots of other recurring locations like Rabbit's Garden and Pooh's Front Door and Owl's Treehouse and all their houses, they've all got, you know, the same, they all, all the houses look the same uh, in most shots. So, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if most of the backgrounds in this episode were reused because nobody goes anywhere or does anything. Uh, duh, there's nothing wrong with reusing assets. I believe in work smarter, not harder. Whatever gets the job done. Uh, it just speaks to how boring this episode is in that I doubt they had to make much new stuff. Episode 21A, The New Eeyore. Well, uh, I didn't like this one that much either, but I guess it's not a complete disaster. So in this episode, Eeyore is sad because he can't join a party that the other animals are having. Uh, even though he can, he just doesn't want to, uh, but he's still sad about it. Anyway, I guess he lacks confidence or something. So Tigger tries to help him by giving him tips on how to be popular. And his first tip is to say hello. So throughout much of the rest of the episode, Eeyore is just saying, oh, oh, and nothing else as though he's that Indian guy on Big Bang Theory who can't talk in front of girls or whatever. Uh, so Eeyore just keeps following Tigger's advice. And most of Tigger's advice is just like, act more like me, Tigger. Uh, so eventually, Eeyore just paints himself with tiger stripes and starts bouncing on people and annoying them, and hijinks ensue. And the other animals really hate Eeyore doing this. They hate it even more than when Tigger does the exact same thing. Uh, so it's basically this comic. This is the plot of this episode. Wait, hang on, hang on. Let me just um, let me just, just, just fix it. Okay, there. Yes, that's the plot of the episode. Uh, it's, per it's perfect. So anyway, the other animals decide they need to put a stop to this and make Eeyore go back to normal. But Eeyore has already taken the hint and gone back to normal on his own. And everyone's like, yeah, thank God. So I guess the more positive reading here is that the animals just like Eeyore the way he is, which is nice. Um, but I don't really get the sense that Eeyore learned anything here aside from like, don't act weird. I mean, he says that he's, he says he learned to say hello but like, no, he didn't. He he already knew how to say hello. He's he's said hello in other episodes before. It's stupid. Uh, so anyway, I really don't like this episode's interpretation of Eeyore as like pathetic, afraid of rejection and validation seeking. It's it's really depressing. Um, his portrayal in Donkey for a Day as a loner by choice was a lot more positive. Episode twenty one B Tigger Private Ear. Ah, uh, this one's a really uh, annoying. <laughs> uh, it's one of those episodes that shows have where a character gets a job for one episode and then they give it up at the end. So uh, Tigger decides to be a detective because Owl reads them a non-specific Sherlock Holmes-esque mystery story and Tigger thinks it's cool, I guess. So he says he's a private ear because he he misheard the the phrase private eye, and so to make mysteries to solve, he starts stealing people's stuff and misplacing it on purpose so that he can quote unquote find it for them again. Uh, and so through a series of of gaffes in his plan, Rabbit ends up thinking that Piglet stole his honey, uh, and Tigger knows that he didn't. But he won't admit it, so they have a trial to determine Piglet's guilt, and uh, there are madcap shenanigans, and then Tigger feels guilty and confesses, and I don't know, it's just so irritating. It's just so irritating that the whole plot of the episode is only just because Tigger is lying, and there's not even a good reason for it, so I just want it to end. I just want it to be over. Nothing even happens when they find out that it was Tigger. Rabbit just says, don't do it again, and Tigger says, okay, uh, bad episode. Episode 22A, Party Pooper. Uh, finally, uh, this is what I would call a real episode. Uh, it's still a 10 minute half lengther, but the animation is noticeably better than it has been in the last couple. 
So the episode starts by establishing that Rabbit just loves being organized and he loves making schedules and sticking to schedules and crossing things off his to-do lists. But uh uh-oh, he's having a party today and he's not ready, but he's going to make a schedule because that's how you throw a great party. Uh, I'm pretty sure SpongeBob had an episode with the same plot. Yeah, yeah, I I just looked it up. And uh, not only did SpongeBob do this, but also that episode had the extremely similar title of Party Pooper Pants. I guess these titles are just uh, pretty low-hanging fruit, to be fair. So anyway, Rabbit's got the schedule and the other animals are helping him get ready. But they go off schedule and that's... Uh, Rabbit can't... Ooh, he hates that. And then the guests arrive early and they arrive early. It's not on schedule. So Rabbit says, get out, go do something else while I get ready. Uh, and he tells the other animals to keep the guests busy... So he can get back on schedule and get all his preparations done. But then by the time he's ready, everyone's gone and he's sad. So we had the scene. He has a, he pulls it. He does the pink Amina, Diane pie. Ooh, I'll make fake friends to have the party with and I, I'll lose my mind a little bit. Um, I keep referencing other cartoons that did similar things, but obviously this show was before My Little Pony and before SpongeBob. So it did it first. I was sure, by the way, that there was be a name for this trope of a character having a party full of fake guests uh, when no real ones show up. But I checked TV tropes, and there's not one. There's a trope for one-person birthday party where no one comes to your party, and there's lonely doll girl when you talk to your inanimate objects because you don't have any friends. So I guess this is just those two things combined. Garbage website, by the way, TV tropes. I mean, it's okay to point out patterns in media. I just hate the tone of it. Like, I'm sorry to get off topic here, but like, look at how they describe that Pinkie Pie party of one scene. Psychological horror. Pinkie's breaking from her perceived loneliness is absolutely creepy. Ooh, with the italics for emphasis. Hidden depths. You wouldn't have believed that an episode of My Little Pony starring the silly party crazy member could be so profound and creepy. Oh, I can't believe they would subvert my expectations like that. How could they do this to me? Out of character is serious business. When Pinky's not happy, she's scary with the italics for emphasis again. It's just you, serious. It's just serious business. Out of character is serious business. The eponymous party of one isn't like Pinky's usual parties. Instead of a childlike birthday party, it's more of a like an adult formal dinner party. She also drops her quirky vocabulary and starts to use a more serious tone and more formal words, even using snooty accents for her guests. Finally, her attitude toward her new friends is somewhat distant wow it's formal snooty and somewhat distant that really is scary in italics it's terrible it's disgusting embarrassing it's workings of a a baby's brain at least in this troper's opinion ymmv okay back on topic rabbit's guests are as he puts it 500 relatives so he also mentioned a relative in tigger's shoes albeit a fictional one I know Owl also sometimes references his relatives, and it makes sense for these two, because in the old Pooh books, their rabbit and owl are real animals. They're not stuffed toys. So they would have families. Um, actually, I looked it up j- uh, just now, and rabbit in the old Pooh books had a habit of referring to his quote-unquote friends and relations, which apparently did include rabbits but also just other animals and critters of the hundred acre wood generally uh so curiously these relatives of his that we see in the episode they all look like this they look like these more normal realistic looking rabbits who don't speak i'm not sure what's going on here to be honest they do seem to understand language but at no point does rabbit uh, or anyone converse with any of them individually so it's not really clear that they're even like sapient We did see Rabbit being sold as a toy in How Much Is That Rabbit in the Window? And Bruno in Monkey See, Monkey Do Better calls all them toys, Rabbit included. So I guess the explanation is actually pretty simple. So I guess it means that despite uh, in the books, Rabbit is a real animal. But I think in New Adventures, Rabbit is meant to be a stuffed toy. But then how how are these his relatives then? Whatever. Who cares? Uh, anyway, in summary, hijinks ensue, and Rabbit turns learns to chill out and not be such a stickler. And just, like, go with the flow, man. 
Hooray. Episode 22B, The Old Switcheroo. Okay, I would call this another real episode. So Tigger and Roo are out playing, but Kanga wants to give Roo a bath, and Roo doesn't want a bath, and Tigger is even more of a hardline anti-bathist. So that's it. That's the conflict. Bath or no bath. Reflexively, I want to say, like, ooh, it's weird. Why is Tigger hanging out with a little kid, a little baby child? Uh, but my heart wouldn't be in it. I don't think it, I don't really believe it's a problem. Because, I mean, like, on the one hand, Tigger, like all the non-kangaroo animals, in fact, they all live on their own. And I guess provide for themselves somehow. They get honey somehow. Uh, forage for it. Trade for, I don't know. Um, so that kind of implies that they're all adults. But in spite of that, they all display mostly a child level of intellect. Even the smart ones, like rabbit and owl, are prone to childish misunderstandings. If if they were human characters living in human society, I, I guess it would seem weird. But Tigger's character like wouldn't even make sense as a human. Like, what sort of a grown man spends all his free time practicing his bouncing? No, no. Tigger is no man. He is a beast. He is a simple creature with simple motivations that don't include anything that would make it sketchy for him to be friends with a tiny baby. They both just love to bounce, and and I love that for them. So Kanga does come and retrieve Roo for a bath, and at that point, the plan becomes the titular switcheroo. The titular, the titular switcheroo. Titular, the, that is, they swap Roo for Piglet. And I actually find this genuinely funny, for a couple of reasons. Tigger talks about the bath like it will literally kill Rue. So what's his solution? Uh, do it, just do, let, let it happen to Piglet. Let, it, let, it, let Piglet take it instead. George Orwell, 1984, in the Ministry of Love, Kanga brings Tigger to room 101, and in that room is a bubbly bath. Do it to Piglet! Don't do it to me! Do it to Piglet! Uh, so Piglet does pick up on this ominous vibe and ask, what will happen? And almost as an afterthought, Tigger pacifies him by saying that when can no, don't worry, don't worry. When Kanga discovers the switcheroo, she'll be they'll all jump out and shout, aha! And this will surprise her so much that she'll forget to do the bath. And I think that Tigger had not even thought of this until Piglet asked, but I think that in the moment he says it, he has already convinced himself for the time that yeah, this will totally work. And Piglet buys it in the moment, but tragically, his instinct was right, because once Tigger does get Rue, he completely forgets about the aha, and they just leave, and just leaves Piglet to his gruesome fate, and I just think that that's uh, fantastic. So about Kanga, I don't understand what her deal is uh, in this episode. So when she gets home with the switcherooed Piglet, she looks right at him, and acts like it's Rue, gives him the bath, even when Piglet's telling her, like, I'm not Rue, I'm Piglet. And I think she's got to be playing dumb, like, to teach Piglet a lesson or or something. Like, she she has to know. She can't not know that that's not Rue. Like, it's just, it's not. She's looking right at him. Uh, Like, I, I'd have thought that Kanga, as a parental figure, would be smarter than the other animals, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Like, maybe she's She's just as dumb as the rest of them, or maybe even dumber. I mean, she's acting even dumber. Like, later on, Pooh also does not recognize Piglet, but it's because Pooh's, Piglet's covered in bubbles, so he's, like, obscured. So, like, at least he's got that excuse. But I don't know, maybe she's not any smarter. Maybe her programming is whatever kind of imagination-powered stuffing golem these things are, compels her to act maternal, but otherwise she's she's no smarter than the rest of them. Like, a few times this episode, she's extremely easily duped and distracted with, like, borderline incoherent small talk. A lot of weather we're having, huh, Kanga? Oh, yes, quite a lot, but not nearly as much as last week. So, like, did she just let this whole switcheroo farce just play out? Just let Rue be kidnapped and switched for Piglet? And just pretend to be fooled by it the whole time? Did she somehow know in advance that Tigger and Roo would eventually get themselves stuck together with bubblegum and require a bath to extricate themselves and thus learn a valuable lesson about personal hygiene? Maybe. 
when that happens, Kanga suddenly starts acting like, oh, no, but you don't want to have a bath. Like, it's a necessary evil. And I think it's sarcastic. I think she's being sarcastic. But I, I honestly can't say that I'm certain. I don't know. She's either weirdly conniving or, like, extra oblivious, even more than the rest of them are. The jury's out. Anyway, this episode ends with a meta joke that I've never forgotten ever since I, I watched this episode as a kid. Uh, when Tigger talks about the bath, he says that getting one will be the end, as in you'll, you'll die. Uh, but then, haha, <laughs> when at the end they finally have to get a bath, Tigger realizes it's not so bad, but he says he was right. It really is the end. Hoo 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 hoo, as in it's the end of the episode. <laughs> do you, do you get it? <laughs> yeah. And it's also the end of the first season of New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, since this is the season's last episode. And that means it's also the end of this retrospective series, because I said I would go through the full season, and now I have. So yeah, I set out like four years ago to uh, find out if the show that I remembered fondly from my childhood was uh, any good by my standards as a grown-up viewer. Uh, so was it? Uh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, that's harsh. You know, there were a lot of forgettable episodes. Uh, some episodes were decently engaging or had some funny or otherwise memorable moments, but, you know, I would say the show largely struggles to justify the time it takes to watch more often than not. Um, there are a few sprinkled throughout that I would maybe say are worth a watch, like Find Her Keeper and Donkey for a Day being the pretty clear standouts. Uh, so that's that's my verdict. Not altogether unexpected result uh, uh, for a children's cartoon, but, you know, I wanted to find out for myself, and uh, now I did. Well, that's a, that's a load off my shoulders. For four years now, when people have asked... When am I finishing that Winnie the Pooh series? I've said, ah, I'll get around to it. I will get around to it. So I decided to finally uh, sit down and knock it out. Kind of just to, to sh- show everyone and sh- also remind myself that I'm still here on YouTube. I'm still making content. Uh, have not hit that 100 patron goal yet, but made a lot of progress towards hitting it. And when it's hit, I will do what I said in the Mega Man video and make a... Uh, let people choose a lecture topic for me. For the moment, I have a couple different ideas for lecture videos that I want to do soon that are in various stages of preparation. I will pick something and, and go through with it before too, too long. You'll see some, some longer content on this channel for now. You know, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for patroning. I've been streaming on Twitch a lot. So follow my Twitch if you want to, uh, keep up with me in real time. Been playing Battle Network over there. Been having been having a mostly a mostly good time with it. So um, that's all. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you around. All right. Bye for now.